Why would anyone buy a skinny neglected horse? Because as we learned in this episode of Barn Stories, those can turn into the best horses you'll ever know. Welcome to the Barn Stories podcast. I'm Lori Prins, editor of Equus Magazine. And I'm managing editor Christine Barakat. This podcast features our favorite essays and articles published in Equus over the past 40 years. Although Equus is known for articles on horse care and veterinary research, our editorial mission has always been guided by the bond that exists between horses and people. And each issue has featured a real life story that celebrates how horses enrich our lives and touch our hearts. We searched our archives, chosen the stories that resonated with our readers, and given them new life in this audio format. Longtime subscribers may recognize some of their favorite pieces. And if you're new to the Equus community, these stories will confirm that no matter what sort of saddle you sit in, a deep emotional connection to horses is something we all share. This is a story of a woman buying a horse she did not need, but who clearly needed her. It's a situation so many horse people can relate to purchasing and rehabilitating a horse who has fallen on hard times. There's no guarantee that the horse will even survive, much less be rideable. It's a financial and emotional gamble, yet so many horse people take it. Why? The only explanation I can think of is that the potential rewards outweigh those risks, even if the reward is just knowing you've given a horse a soft place to land at the end of a hard life. But sometimes these stories have a very happy ending, and the horse ends up being a treasured companion for years. Or the horse, as in this story, ends up taking care of the rider in a moment of need, just as she had done for him. So let's listen to Saving Nugget, written by Alice Hendrickson and read by Taylor Autumn. I do not need another horse. I have a shirt that states that, repeated three times. Every time I drive past a horse for sale sign, these words reverberate in my head. After all, I have only three stalls in my barn. Coming home one day a few years back, I had almost reached my private road when I noticed a horse for sale at our neighbor's place. Once again, I was unfazed, at least for the moment. But by the time I'd gotten back to my driveway, my usual mantra had been replaced with a new one. Go back. So I did. A lady met me as I stepped out of the car to ask about the horse. I already owned two Appaloosa mares, so when she said it was an Appy Gelding, I said I was interested in seeing him. Still, I was stealing myself against the temptation. But as he came into view, being led up from the pasture, my heart broke and tears clouded my judgment. Every rib was visible and his withers and spines stood up in a sharp ridge that ran down his back. The gelding stood in front of me, his head hanging low, uninterested in his surroundings. I was told that they had just taken him in from another individual, who had left him in a pasture to fend for himself, eating only whatever grass was available. I petted him, looked into his sad eyes, and reached for my phone. Years earlier, I had made this identical phone call, after a friend had told me of an Appaloosa mare for sale. I had three horses at the time, but already had plans to sell one. And the mare standing before me then had horrendous burns over her buttocks. We never learned what happened to her. My husband's initial response when I called was, we don't need another horse. But sympathy prevailed. And after eight years of nursing, her scars had all but disappeared. She turned out to be a fabulous horse. So this time, when I called about the gelding, I wasn't quite sure what my husband would say. We were down to two horses and had a third stall, but still. You're not going to want to hear this, but you have to come see this horse. He must have heard the urgency in my voice, because this time he never questioned me. He came right over, and it was clear he understood my concern. Just to be safe, we called a veterinarian for a health check to make sure there were no underlying issues contributing to his condition. The horse's feet needed trimming, and his teeth weren't in good shape, but ultimately the veterinarian's opinion was that the gelding was in pretty good health, just in need of some serious groceries. We were told he was about 200 to 300 pounds underweight. So we made the deal, haltered our new gelding, 
and walked him slowly across the road to move into the empty stall right next to my mare's. It's only natural you want what's best for your horse. Wholesome blends from Tribute Superior Equine Nutrition combine specially selected whole seeds and vegetables with a premium level of balanced nutrition. Crafted using the safest manufacturing practices, Wholesome Blends feeds are 100% soy free with no added iron. For a buy three, get one free coupon, visit tributeequinenutrition.com. We named our new charge Nugget for his golden color. Feeding him was my first priority. It was a real challenge at the beginning because hunger made him aggressive. He bolted toward his food, ears back, and I had to move quickly to avoid serious injury. But I fed him small amounts of hay and grain frequently throughout the day, as the veterinarian had directed. And once the gelding started gaining weight, his desperation to eat eased. Eventually, I taught him to let me kiss his nose before any feed was given. As the months passed, we addressed all of Nugget's issues, and his health gradually improved. As he gained weight, his coat grew glossy, and the sadness in his eyes disappeared. Our bond grew stronger with every moment we spent together, and I lavished plenty of time on him, loving on him and speaking to him, telling him how one day we would ride out together. When I bought Nugget, I had been told he had been a trail horse. So after our first year together, Once he was back to full health and soundness, I decided it was time to saddle him up and see how he did. I quickly discovered that he could be ridden, but he seemed to only know one gear, and it was reverse. I called a trainer, and with repeated sessions, we soon had Nugget on the right track, but it would be another full year before we would be ready to hit the trails. Once I started riding Nugget out on the trail, He soon showed me that the time and effort I'd invested in him had been well worth it. During our time working together on the ground, we had built a bond of trust in each other and become a true team. What's more, Nugget's ability to keep me calm was helping me relax while I rode other horses, and it certainly helped to protect me during one serious mishap on the trail. I was riding out with friends when, no more than a mile out, I felt Nugget's back end slip. I had no idea what was going on and assumed his back feet had just slid a bit on the gravel road. I waited for him to walk on, but he stood still. Suddenly, I saw the ground getting closer, rising to almost meet my left stirrup, and I realized we were still sinking. I had no idea what the problem was, but fear never entered my consciousness. Time slowed to a standstill as my mind struggled to make sense of what was happening. My friends were riding behind us, but if they called out to us, I never heard them. I was completely focused on what was going on. I felt Nugget struggling, but he did not seem panicky. Why was he struggling? I spoke to him calmly, telling him it was okay to take it easy. He continued to strain as I spoke, and after scrambling with his front legs, He finally pulled himself up. Once he was solidly on all fours, he began to shake. I continued talking to him in a calm voice and petting his shoulder. Then I asked him to walk forward a few steps. I stopped and turned, and to my amazement, I saw that as we were crossing over a culvert, a sinkhole had opened in the road under us. The gravel had given way, and Nugget's left rear leg had slid into the hole up to his hock. I dismounted and checked his leg. He had several cuts and was favoring it. I also peered down into the hole. It wasn't just clean gravel. The exposed surface was cluttered with fragments of torn metal and broken cement jutting in all directions. The slightest bit of panicky thrashing could have resulted in disaster. And... I realized, had I been unseated, I too might have fallen back into the hole. I hugged Nugget and cried some tears of relief. This day could have ended so very differently. Nugget's cuts weren't deep, but he was sore. Slowly, we walked the mile back to the trailhead, flagging down a park ranger to notify him of the danger on the road. Once at home, My veterinarian assured me that Nugget needed nothing more than pain medications, antibiotics, 
and bandaging. He had no broken bones or injured tendons, just cuts and some serious muscle strains. After a few weeks of healing, he was back to normal. I will always be grateful that I took the time to stop for a horse for sale, and that I brought Nugget into my life. We are a true team, and I look forward to more warm days with trails to explore. Thanks for listening to Barn Stories. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have a favorite article or essay from the Equus Archives that you'd like us to feature in a future podcast, let us know. You can reach us at Equus Barn Stories, all one word, at gmail.com. Did you enjoy this episode of Barn Stories? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. Thanks for listening. The Barn Stories Podcast is a production of the Equine Podcast Network, an entity of the Equine Network.